Teats will be beginning in just a couple of minutes. Everyone seated. That's set to go. Just a reminder, those wishing to purchase basketball season tickets for next year, we have a representative in the lobby taking deposits. So make sure you can get online first here for 23-24 Army basketball season tickets. Just an outline of how today's event will go. We'll hear from Mr. Mike Buddy, Coach Kevin Kuwick. After coaches finish speaking, the event here will conclude. Then we'll have media members present here at NOAC Auditorium or on Zoom. They'll have an opportunity to ask questions and answers with Coach Kuwick in this front area of the auditorium. We ask members of the Army Athletic Communications staff here to assist. Well, ladies and gentlemen, every day is a great day to be a Black Knight, especially days like today. We'd like to thank everyone here at NOAC Auditorium. General Gilland here, Mr. Mike Buddy, really appreciate everyone's support here as we usher in a new era of Army men's basketball. And as we like to say to our Army fans throughout the Hudson Valley, across the nation, and around the world, watching via YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Twitter. Well, what a moment for West Point and Army athletics. We usher in this new era of Army men's basketball. We welcome Kevin, Catherine, Natalie, and Kara to our family here in the Army West Point Athletic Department and look forward to many thrills and achievements both on and off the court in the years to come. As we officially introduce the new Lee Anderson head men's basketball coach here at West Point. With that, I'd like to welcome the Director of Athletics here at West Point, Mr. Mike Buddy. This is awesome. There's like four times the amount of people who came to my press conference. But they didn't have Chick-fil-A either, so I guess I won't be that, uh, that disappointed. Um, thank you all for coming. Let me echo Rich's comments. It's, it's awesome to see this many faces in the room, um, some legends of the program uh, I see bouncing around in the room. To have Coach Traversi and the women's team here, they're going to be great partners in this new effort to get these basketball programs um, in the, uh, the annual event of playing and winning Patriot League championships. So uh, we really appreciate you being here. I want to thank a lot of people, certainly – the, the boss of all of us, our Sergeant Hulka, Lieutenant General Gilland, who is a, uh, a true supporter of everything that we try to accomplish. And, and, and the reason that we're here today are these men over to my right and the men over to my left and the 1,100 other men and women who compete to represent the United States Military Academy on a daily basis. Our goal is to provide an extraordinary Division I experience. And Coach Kuwik's here to help deliver that uh, promise to these young men. The only reason that I have a job and the only reason I have a career is because of these young men and women who compete uh, and represent us on and off the court in a first-rate manner. So certainly it starts at the top with General Gilland. His support is, is phenomenal um, and unconditional. Uh, he supports us in, in our efforts as long as we stay within the guidelines of the United States Military Academy, of course. So, sir, thank you for being here. Sergeant Major, thank you for being here. Um, I want to say, uh, thank the search committee. These, these efforts are Herculean, um, especially in a sport like basketball. Um, there's a ton of interest. There's a ton of generated um, phone calls and return phone calls. So I was very fortunate to have a staff of senior members that helped uh, run through this, this search to find the, the, the right fit to lead this program, none more so than Tom Theodorakis, who uh, is the sport administrator for men's basketball, um, must have worked 24 hours a day. Uh, for a good three or four weeks while we did this search, keeping his thumb on the pulse of the young men in the program, the current coaching staff, uh, making sure that Coach Allen's um, uh, circumstances were, were maximized. And so Tom worked extremely hard throughout this process, and we just want to thank Tom in addition to, to General Gillen for that, that commitment. Uh, two of our head ORs, uh, Colonel Hill, Colonel Kelly, Phenomenally involved. Uh, who better than to help us find the next leader of this program than, than two men who, are, who have committed to serve this country, understand the program, understand what we're trying to accomplish. Phenomenal teammates throughout. And then certainly plenty of graduates, key stakeholders, um, some, some subject matter experts who love Army West Point, who have committed their lives to, to basketball at, at the collegiate level. To have them take your phone call, help you think through scenarios, um, vet candidates was was invaluable as well, and then I have to I have to thank the team right this this team, Charlie and Jalen specifically um, were heavily involved. The entire team was was able to participate in creating a, an ideal candidate profile um, as we worked through this search, trying to identify 
traits and characteristics that would be key um, to, to making sure that we got the right person in this seat, and that was very valuable and very appreciated by myself. Uh, and then finally, Kyle Bowlesby, who helped as our search consultant, um, just really keeping us on track, helping us organize through throughout the process to make sure that, that we, we didn't leave any stone unturned. So all of those circumstances led us to Coach Kuwick and his family being here today, and we're thrilled to welcome them, as Rich said, to the Army West Point family. You know, we started with a list of 10 or 12 names of people that we thought would be the fit, and then as we developed the profile, uh, those 12 names probably ballooned up to, to 50 or 60, uh, and that's a credit to the young men who, who played their hearts out every night on the, on the hardwood and put us in a position that this job was extremely attractive to several dozen candidates. Uh, and then the challenge to, to whittle that list down. Uh, and what really stood out uh, with Kevin specifically was, was the fit. Uh, fit is a, is a buzzword, it kind of gets used a lot. But it's really important in college athletics that there is a fit between the vision of the athletic department and the vision of the university or the academy leadership in this instance, and the head coach. Um, and that's important in all Division I institutions. It's even more important at West Point. Uh, for those of you who have poured your souls into this place, you understand that this is not a garden variety civilian institution. Our ex expectations are different, our demands are different, and the commitment and discipline are also different. So what really stood out to me specifically and, and the committee with, with Coach Kuwick were all of the things that, that put him in the position where he is today. Uh, not just where he coached, but who he learned from. If you look at his resume, and I, I won't go through it if you've, if you've read our press release, uh, but when you get a phone call from Thad Mata and Brad Stevens and Archie Miller and Bob McKillop, and you've recruited to places like Davidson and Butler and Ohio State uh, and had success at so many different levels, uh, for me, who he learned from is probably as important as the, uh, the tremendous accomplishments that he's had. Uh, if you read deeper into his file, his ability to outthink and outwork uh, com com competitors is really going to put them in a good position here. There aren't many Division I head basketball coaches who are president of their class who studied mechanical engineering. Um, I don't know that there's anybody on the planet um, <laughs> that has done that. He articulated a clear vision for how we're going to get to the Patriot League championship game. He articulated how important it is to have a, uh, a, a rigorous um, optimism uh, to make sure that these young men love the game and enjoy what they're doing. Um, all of those things were extremely important to us as we continued to vet our candidates, and it quickly became evident that, that we, we had found our guy. And this is completely separate from the fact that he chose to serve his country for 10 years coming out of ROTC at Notre Dame, and that's just the icing on the cake. It says a lot about who he is as a human being, and to do all of that while still climbing the ladder as a Division One basketball coach um, just spoke volumes. So, Without further ado, we are thrilled to have found our guy. Uh, Coach Kuwick is, has a beautiful family. He's very committed to that family. That also resonated with us. So uh, Kevin is here, his wife Catherine, and his two little cheerleaders, literally and figuratively today, are here, Natalie and Kara. So welcome to the family, Kevin. Come on up, and let's hear from you. That's how you get the running this morning. So this is number 32, because Kevin is our 32nd head basketball coach. We're going to give him a couple minutes so he can put this on before he makes his remarks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, much, Mike, for the great introduction. Um, I think one of the most powerful life lessons is, is gratitude. Um, every time a Davidson basketball player gets meal money, gets a new pair of Steph Currys, gets some new gear, the expectation was that they would text Coach McKillop and they would say thank you. And that wasn't for Coach, that was to create a habit. When people ask me about my experience in Iraq, the first thing I always say is that the worst slum in the United States is better than 99% of Iraq. And we should be so thankful for all we have over here every single day. And I mean, this is just really overwhelming, this opportunity, something that I've worked a long time for. And uh, to start out with, with the, the leadership on post, to Mike and his whole team. I think of that first Zoom that we did, and I think it was Theo and Abby and Tricia and Sydney and 
Mac and Colonel TK and, and Mike was in black in the background. It was kind of spooky a little bit, but we got we got through it. Big brother was watching, but uh, um, wow, your, your belief in me it's it's it means so much. And uh, I will say, March 29, 2023, is this really special day for the Kuwik family. But you wouldn't understand entirely why. It's a little bit after nine o'clock. I had just fin finished running around in the neighborhood. Got back to the house. Catherine was in her office with the door closed on a video call. Our little angel, Natalie, was somewhere in the house unsupervised. We didn't have to worry about her. And then there was Kara Barracuda. She was in her restive state. She was watching a cartoon on the couch, not for long. I went upstairs. I was ready to get in the shower. And pretty much all hell broke loose. I hear Kara pounding on Catherine's door. Mommy, mommy, I've had an accident. I've had an accident. And it's, it's going crazy down there. Little did I know the Hudson River had formed in the hallway, just three steps from the, from the bathroom, unfortunately. And just as I was ready to get ready to rappel down the stairs and assault through the objective, the phone rang, and it was Mike Buddy saving me. And obviously, that led to a really special day. So I really don't know. I don't know if there's ever going to be a boy brave enough to even ask Kara on a date, let alone marry her. But if there is... It'll be one hell of a wedding toast, I promise you that. So, but hey, Catherine and I, we really look forward uh, to being part of, of Army Athletics, being a great teammate, great partner to all of you, getting to those women's soccer games and basketball games and sprint football and all that stuff. And obviously we hope you guys reciprocate with our guys, especially on those Tuesday, Wednesday nights in the middle of winter, uh, find a way to get to Crystal. That would mean a lot to us. Um, but just really, really appreciative and really excited. Um, the hardest thing about getting ready for th th what I was going to say today was thinking about what I was going to say about my wife. Um, I think if you looked on the list of probably the most thankless jobs in the world, a coach's wife, a coach's spouse, clearly has to be darn near at the top of it. Uh, especially when you look at, well, in the first place, she's a kick-ass attorney. Kick butt wouldn't do you justice, dear. Um, she's a great kindergarten lunch maker. Um, but you know when you you know when you think about two springs in a row, basically, on the on the blink of an eye, I'm in the airplane. I'm flying to Indiana. I'm flying to New York. And uh, dear, work your job, keep the kids going, uh, sell the house, ready go. So you know when you think about for better or for worse, and if you imagine a road, you're going from better and you're getting to worse, and you get to worse, and there's probably like a hill going up and you got a 50-pound ruck on there for another 10 miles. That's pretty much what Catherine's doing for me. So, dear, it means so much. Uh, here we go with another adventure. Buckle up. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, my parents, Ed and Karen, are here. <laughs> and the story that I have to tell, um, I was transitioning from active duty to the National Guard probably about 20 years ago. It was two years early. Um, and so I looked at that as a great opportunity to get a, a two-year head start on, on seeing if I could make coaching work. Uh, and I called home, and uh, first there was my mom, and probably for the next two months as I tried to kind of lay the groundwork and, and find a path, I get all these notes in the mail from my mom. And uh, the one that sticks in my mind, it was, ironically, it was a vignette about an Army engineer officer that was at the officer base, of course. He was trying to get a slot for Ranger School. He was competing for it. And basically every week or two, his mom would send him a note of encouragement. And, the, and, the, and every time the, 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 the way the vignette went, it would say, your dream of becoming an Army Ranger. And every spot of the story, my mom put a little post-it and said to be a college basketball coach. Here I am. My dad, a little different when I talked to my dad. Dad, I think I want to get into coaching. Got a little quiet on the other side of the phone. <laughs> For the next couple weeks, Call home, Dad, how's it going? Good. Anything new? No. Talk to your mother. Finally told me, he basically said a couple weeks later, he said, Kevin, he goes, you got a great opportunity with your engineering degree from Notre Dame, and you, you, you really should do something with that. He goes, I was an engineer in college. I went into politics, but it probably would have been a lot easier for our family if I had, had done something with engineering. So my dad told me not what I wanted to hear. He told me what I needed to hear. And, of course, I proceeded to disregard that advice and do what I wanted to do. Uh, but the beauty of the story is three and a half years later, I was at Ohio University, my first D1 job. We played at North Carolina in the Dean Dome on ESPN, and we won. 
And I came home that summer for a family cookout. My Aunt Jeannie was there, and, and she said to me, she said, Kevin, she said, that week before you guys played North Carolina, your dad was calling everyone in the family and telling them to check you out. So I appreciate it, Mom and Dad. <laughs> got my whole family here. My brother Mark got up at 2.30 uh, in the morning to drive from Buffalo. My Aunt Donna's my super fan. She's here. My college buddy, Nate Ebling, his wife, Karen. My cousin, Paul, his wife, Angela, he works a uh, physical therapist. They're actually here on post for a couple more weeks. Um, you know, they always say, we always said in the Army, when it's, anyone can do it when it's 70 and sunny. Life is not always 70 sunny. My life has not always been 70 and sunny, but your family and your friends, they help get you through it. Um, you know, Mike alluded to the guys I coach for. Holy cow, you know, at basketball and coaching, we always say we're all borrowers. All right, well, I, I've been able to borrow from the best. Chad Mata, Bob McKillop, Brad Stevens, Archie Miller, Tim O'Shea, Tom O'Shea, Tom Crowley, Mike Neenaber. Those I wouldn't be here without all those guys. Nothing is really my idea. The way we put it together, hopefully, is. But uh, I've been really lucky. And I really want to want to point out Coach Mata. Um, our job is not done at Butler. Year one, we had a tough year. There's a lot of work to be done to get where we get. It's really hard for me to leave that and, and to leave that job unfinished. But for Coach to encourage me, to support me, and then when I got this job, to be as excited as he was for me, it means everything. And hopefully I can be that kind of boss for you guys. Lastly, and I, I'm just going, this is going to be a walk down memory lane. Specialist Jose Lopez, 864th Engineers. Sergeant Hank Stone, 113th Engineers. Shaman Reeves, Christian Brothers University. Mark Pater, St. Michael's College. Leon Williams, Ohio University. Matt Howard, Butler University. John Diebler, Ohio State. Scoochie Smith, University of Dayton. And Ali Ali, Butler University. You know, there's that saying from Isaac Newton, the famous scientist. If I have seen further, it's because I stood on the shoulders of giants. So for all the soldiers I've led, for all the young men that I've coached, I'm here because of them. They did way more to get me here than I did. And I, I can't say thank you enough to every single one of you, wherever you are. So thanks for listening to my gratitude piece. I want to talk about Army basketball. But it's not about me, it's about us. So if our eight seniors could come up here and stand up here with me. Let's go, man. Let, let's get some of the tall guys on each side, okay? We got our three-headed monster here. So we got we got Cobana, we got Zach, we got Abe, Jalen, Jared, Zach, Matt, Charlie. Um, when I think about Army basketball, the word that keeps coming back to me is special. It starts out with this is a special place. I think I've been reading, uh, sir, it's the preeminent leader development institution in the world. Now, for a young young American that's trying to serve in their armed forces, let's at least consider the options. You can fly an airplane or you can lead troops. You can take a bubble bath with your rubber ducky in the tub or you can lead troops. I think the choice is pretty clear. But uh, we're really excited to be a part of this great place. If you think about the names from Grant to Eisenhower to MacArthur, it just sends chills down your spine. Army basketball, Knight, Krzyzewski. Just, it's, it's amazing, the tradition. It just oozes tradition. It inspires you. Um, we're really lucky. There's a couple guys I want to I want to single out this tradition Army basketball. Kevin Houston is here. Kevin Houston has set the standard for this program for all future basketball players to follow. I don't know if we can get there, Kevin, but we're going to try our butts off. I promise you. General Bob Brown. I served under him in Mosul, Iraq. Probably the most inspirational, charismatic leader that I've ever been around. Obviously, Army basketball is near and dear to his heart. And lastly, my really good friend back in Cleveland, Ohio, Babe Kwasniak. If you can find someone that is more passionate about the United States Army, about the United States Military Academy, and Army basketball, I want to meet that person. Babe has been an awesome friend and an inspiration, and especially through this process, and I look forward to having him around for a ton. He's down in Florida doing a speaking engagement today, but he texted me this morning, and uh, God, it means a, means a ton. We are going to work so hard to represent this place and make it proud, and uh, really excited about that. 
This place is a special mission, something that's near and dear to me. Yes, in the, on the court, we work hard to get better physically. We work hard to compete. In the classroom, we develop our minds. We develop our thinking. But most important, we are developing leaders of character, servant leaders. That, that mission means everything to me. And heaven forbid that call comes someday, and we need to step up and defend our country and lead our soldiers in battle. I did it myself. I know what it looks like. I know what it takes. General Gillen, I promise you this. These young men are going to be ready. We got a really special group of young men here, Team 122. Great tradition, Army basketball. We have great talent. We have great character. We have great work ethic. We care for our brothers. We love our brothers. But the challenge for this team is we have 27 guys next year, 21 returnees, three guys coming over from MAPS, three direct admits. There is no way that individually all 27 of us are going to be, be able to reach our personal dreams and goals. It's just not possible in a 40-minute in a game. And it's going to be okay. There's going to be personal disappointments. There's going to be personal frustrations at times. But I know at the, end of the, 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 uh, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, these young men are going to put their personal feelings aside, and they're going to put our team, and they're going to put their brothers at the forefront, and collectively we're going to be able to do something really special. We get to play a really special game. Think back to when you guys were kids, playing in the driveway, playing at the park with your dad, with your brother, with your friends. What this game means to you, all the time that you've put into it, okay? All those thoughts, that's how we're gonna go out and compete and represent Army basketball this year. We're gonna play tough, physically and mentally. We're gonna play together. We're gonna move the ball, we're gonna share the ball on offense, and we're gonna be really detailed. Here's the deal. When nothing's on the line, if you can keep your locker room clean, if you have the discipline to make sure you leave a clean gym, when everything's on the line and it's the last minute against Navy or it's the last minute in the Patriot League championship game, that discipline is what's going to pull you through. So we are going to honor that game with the way that we play. And lastly, we have a special opportunity. Okay, obviously there's a lot of, between now and March 13th, 2024, the Patriot League Championship game. There's going to be, I'm going to mess this up, there's going to be CFT, there's going to be CTLT, there's going to be staff, there's going to be formations, there's going to be lead, there's going to be exams. Uh, it's all going to be there. There's going to be distractions. You're going to get pulled in different directions. But 335 days from now, we, each one of those days, we got to keep our focus on what our goal is. And we need to lock in and we need to work our butts off. So if you think about it, to put it all together, we're at a special place with a special mission, we've got a special group of young men, we're playing a special game, and we have a special opportunity. This is where that work comes in, fellas. This is where that championship process comes in. And it's time for us to kind of step up. If there's not anything else to say, it's time to go and do it. All right, so let's bring it in. Let's go. Let's go. Fellas, let's go. TPB on three. One, two, three. TPB. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Coach. We look forward to your leadership as the Lee Anderson head men's basketball coach here at West Point. Welcome, the Kuwik family. Yeah. That concludes today's event. Those present here in Nowak Auditorium, please join us upstairs on the Class of 56 walkway for refreshments. Again, everyone here invited, Class of 56 walkway for refreshments as we welcome the Kuwik family. For media here in Nowak Auditorium and those we have on Zoom, we have Army Athletics Communication staffers. They're going to be ready to assist in questions and answers and interviews with Coach coming up. Just a reminder, those wishing to purchase basketball season tickets for 2023-2024, we have representatives set up in the lobby. Make sure you get your ticket deposits in, and you'll be there next year for this new era of Army men's basketball. Thank you again, everyone, for coming out. Congratulations to Kevin and your family. Go Army.